Hello, I'm Jonathan Oxhorn, and I'm offering a course called Sustainable Architecture, the Science and Politics of Green Building. In this course, which is open to all students in the university, we look at sustainability from both a scientific standpoint and from a political economic one as well, based on the categories embedded in the LEED rating system, site, water, energy, materials, and indoor environmental quality, or IEQ. Are politics and sustainability really intertwined? Well, just consider a couple of puzzles. The U.S. supported and signed the 1987 Montreal Protocol, an international treaty designed to reduce substances that deplete the ozone layer, in spite of early opposition by aerosol and halocarbon producing industry groups such as DuPont. Such groups, not surprisingly, questioned the scientific underpinning of ozone layer research, yet both Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher ultimately signed the protocol in 1987. On the other hand, the strong scientific consensus on human involvement in global warming is well known. Even so, no such international political consensus was reached at Copenhagen in 2009, and no substantial progress is in sight. And I don't think, from my perspective, that I want America uh, to be engaged in spending that much money on still a scientific theory that has not been proven, and from my perspective, is more and more being put into question. Have politicians really become more irrational in the 25 years since the Montreal Treaty was signed? Or have the cold economic calculations that inform political decisions in powerful countries like the U.S. simply led to different outcomes in these two cases? But the circle that's in the middle of the whole thing has the United States and China. And these two powers, very wary of each other, each is desperate not to have a deal here that will give strategic and economic advantage to the other. Right. That's what this is really about. And what about green building? If, as the U.S. Green Building Council claims, sustainable architecture provides economic benefits and is therefore something that ought to be embraced by businesses such as Walmart acting in their own self-interest, then why does the USGBC feel the need to advocate for governmental intervention and incentives to promote green building? And how is a market-driven approach to sustainable energy use reconciled with the historical result of just such a market-driven strategy, that is, the relentless burning of fossil fuels? The course will operate primarily in seminar format, with weekly reading assignments and in-class discussion. Students will also do some writing and make presentations to the class about buildings that have sustainable qualities. I'll also be giving short lectures in the course, for example, talking about the specific requirements for LEED certification in all five categories mentioned earlier, site, water, energy, materials, and IEQ. I'm looking for students who are interested not just in the science of or the ethical basis for sustainability, but also in the political and economic forces that actually shape and define green buildings. If that's you, consider enrolling in this course. Spaces are limited, and while the course may be offered for another year or two, I won't be teaching it forever. So act now.